Hello brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome back. Um, sorry for the lighting, I really am. Uh, I'm going to probably invest in a couple of those stands with the, pardon me, with the lights on them and the umbrellas that reflect the light so there's not shadow, so you might see a little bit of a shadow. You might see a little bit of a shadow, but I apologize for the lighting and everything. So, the study is, where is the door? Okay. I did a study in the past when people were attacking the true plan of salvation called Finding God's Grace. And if you want to go back and watch it, great. Uh, from that video to this video, God has shown me a lot. I've matured more as a Christian, and we all are maturing every day as a Christian, whether you're a baby Christian or you've been a Christian for a long time, a mature Christian, we're still maturing. Um, and it shows the, how much the ministry has grown uh, from what I was back then to what God has shown me today. So, where's the door? Now, the title, Where's the Door, is something that's asked by somebody who's seeking the door. If you're not seeking the door, you wouldn't ask, where's the door? Now, I'm a King James Bible believer. Please get your King James Bibles out and follow along. I'm using a clipboard with the verses on here uh, for the sake of time. I usually have a hard time, I'm, I'm working myself up of standing in one place for a long time. Uh, I did a video once where I was on my driveway and I kept, you know, going side to side as I was talking and before long I got super close and I was blessed that I didn't get too close to the camera because my lower back, it's like I love physical work, I love to move, I love to do things, but when it comes to just standing there in one spot, sometimes the neighbors will get me to talk, I meet him up on the road and and he's in his truck, or he, he's walking his dog, and I get to stand in there and talk, and they keep me talking for like half an hour to an hour, and afterwards my back hurts. So I'm trying to keep this short as far as if I turn to every scripture, this would be like a two and a half hour with me standing here trying to flip through. I'm not used to that. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't if it's a long study. So get your King James Bibles out, follow along. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Remember what I said about it. Where is the door? The person who asks that means they're doing what? They're seeking it. What does the Bible say? Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. You've got to be seeking the door. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, Isaiah 55, 6. Mm -hmm. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. Seek the Lord while he may be found. That's very important. The Bible talks about how today is the day of salvation. Now is the time to get saved. Not tomorrow, not a week from now, not a month from now. Today, you have no clue what's going to happen to you tomorrow. None of us do. Only God does. Today is the salvation. Seek the Lord while He may be found. So, we're to seek the Lord. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You have to come to a point where you want to know truth. God starts opening your eyes, and He starts calling you to Him. For many are called, but few are chosen. He starts calling, and He starts opening your eyes, and you're like, you look at the world, you start to see the world differently. And you're like, I want to know the truth. I, it just seems like I don't know the truth. I want to know the truth. So you got to be seeking it. Who doesn't want you to find the truth? And before you say anything, I just want to mention this too. I'm wearing all this because it's very cold today and my pelt stove is acting up on me. So I've been fighting to try to get it to work. So I'm wearing this because it is very cold today. It's rainy outside. But who doesn't want you to find the truth? Okay, 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 4, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Okay? Satan doesn't want you finding the door. If you follow along in our studies, brothers and sisters of Christ, 1 and 2 Corinthians, with what's going on, Satan is creating false converts. He's got ministers transform ministers that are acting like ministers of righteousness, but they're servants of Satan. They're going out and creating false converts. He doesn't want people finding the door. 
Okay? So, this whole white board is the world. Somewhere in this world, not physically, but somewhere on this chalkboard, there's a door. How do we find the door? Okay. First, let's look at the state of man real quick. In this whole world, you've got tons of people all over. You have... you got a man or a woman, a lost person in this world. When you're lost, it's just white. You don't really can make out anything spiritually. You're spiritually dead. That's all the world is, okay? What's the state of man? What's the state called that you're in here and you're part of the world, you're of the world? Romans 3.10. If you want to turn to Romans 3.10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all, they are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Okay? Sinner. That's who this is. A sinner. I am still a sinner, but we all, brothers and sisters, started out here. If you're a false convert watching, if you're lost watching, you are here. Okay. Uh, Psalms 39, 5. Okay. What's the state of man? Okay. Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth, and my age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. You can try to be the best person you can and try to say, oh, I'm strong, I'm smart, I, I can do things on my own, I can do things my way and, and be just fine. It's altogether vanity. You're altogether vanity. There's none that do with good, no, not one. Uh, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Not just some, all have sinned. Romans 7, 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? This physical body of death. Okay? If you watch my study, go watch it in Christ Jesus or in the flesh. Uh, the uh, Can a Christian be carnally minded series that we're doing. Okay? Uh, when you're in the world, you're carnally minded and you're walking after the flesh. For all have sinned. Okay? Your flesh is connected to your soul, and when you sin, it taints your soul. Okay? Now, this is the state. You're lost. The light is the world. Now, you start to see truth, and you start realizing God's going to show you that there are two paths. There's a path that leads to hell, and there's a path that leads to heaven. A lot of people like to try to say, well, there's multiple paths to heaven. Well, if you actually do the study, there aren't multiple paths. I mean, mul the lost world likes to say there's multiple paths to heaven, but I said it backwards. People like to say there's many paths to hell. There's only one path to heaven, and they're right, but there's many paths to hell. I used to say that. Okay? What does the Bible teach? The Bible doesn't teach there's many paths to hell. There's one path to hell. Okay? Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, if you want to turn there. Enter ye in at the straight gate. That's talking about heaven. And you have to go through a gate. Oh, we haven't drawn it yet. You have to go through a gate. We're going to get to the door. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Find it? You've got to be seeking the door in order to find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Remember we talked about Satan loves this state. And there's a lot of lost people out there that love this state. They're lost, they're in the world, and they're having the time of their lives with the flesh. Satan loves this. He's going to try to blind you and keep you in this state and even go as far as getting you to believe you're saved when you're lost. Giving you what you want and saying you can be a Christian. If you want to be a Buddhist, atheist, he tries to give you what you want 
and claim that you're doing, and get you to believe that you're doing good, you're doing great just the way you are. Okay? That's what Satan does, and it's deception. Okay? Romans 14, 11, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God, so that every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Okay? There's two places you're going to go, heaven or hell, and regardless of what place you go, you're going to have to stand before Jesus Christ and answer for something. Amen? What are those two things you're going to be answering for? 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The we there is talking about saved sinners, people going to heaven. That every, that every one may receive the thing done in his body according to he According to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Okay? Everybody's going to have to answer Jesus Christ. I am a saved, Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian man with a changed life, new birth. And what I do as a Christian, I'm still going to have to answer to God for it, whether it be good or bad. Well, what if you're lost? I'm skipping ahead a little bit. 2 Corinthians 5.10 all right, we just did that one. I'm sorry. So yes, what if you're lost? You got to answer to Jesus Christ still, because we just read there. For as written as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Talk about Jesus Christ. Romans 20:10. If you want to turn to Romans 20:10, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. These are lost people. If you've rejected Jesus Christ, this is you. If you rejected the real Jesus Christ for a counterfeit Jesus Christ, this is you. And we'll be talking about those people who don't want to go through the real Jesus Christ, the real door. Okay. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged. Saved or judged at the judgment seat of Christ. The lost were judged at the great white throne. Okay. Uh, those things which are written in the book according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. All the lost world, going all the way back to the beginning, when after Adam and Eve, to today, everyone is going to have to stand before Jesus Christ. Either the judgment seat of Christ, or the great white throne. And they were judged, every man according to their works. Now notice for the judgment seat of Christ, it says, according to that he hath done. Not his works necessarily for his sin, but the good things he's done and the bad things he's done. There's rewards at the judgment seat of Christ for people who are saved. For people who are lost, they're going to have to stand before Jesus Christ and answer for their sins. Okay, that's what works are there. That's talking about there, according to their works. And death and Herod were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So what's the two destinations that we talked about here? You can go to heaven. Let's say heaven's up. Or you can go to hell. So you have the lost person in this world. world's way is sin, this wicked world. You're of the world. You're in the world and you're of the world. Your body is connected to your soul. When you sin, it taints the soul. God looks at the soul and sees sin. If you reject Jesus Christ, which we're going to get into, the door, you're going to wind up in hell. You have to answer for those sins, and you're going to wind up in hell. It's that simple. So, this whole world looks foggy. You get to a point where you want to know truth. Something in your heart says something's not right. Just something's not right. I, I don't know what it is. My life just seems broken. It seems something's wrong. You gotta start seeking truth. You gotta start looking for. Put it up here. 
the door singular. One door. Okay. Who's the door? If you want to turn to John 10, 1. Okay. Uh, a lot of people know where I'm going with this. Go to John 10, turn to John 10, 1. Who is this door? Door referring to. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, you know, we talk about Satan. You can follow Satan, or you can follow Jesus Christ. That's your only two choices. You can say you're an atheist all you want. Those are your only two choices. Mm -hmm. Satan loves atheists, because they still worship him. But will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not the things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Who's the door? Who's the door? I can spell right. That's the the handle. <laughs> so the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the door. Okay. Acts 4 12. Okay. Jesus Christ is the door. It says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now we talked about this, okay? the state of man. When you start seeking the Lord, you start realizing there's something wrong with my state, the state of man. There's something wrong with man. You realize that, and we're going to get into the plan of salvation, you start realizing that something's not quite right with you. You're looking for the door. You need to be saved. We talked about it. God lets you know there's heaven and there's hell. He lets you know that you're on your way to hell. That's when you get to the point where I need to get saved. There's ne neither, neither is there salvation in any other. There's no other name given unto men whereby we must be saved. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. You've got to be seeking Jesus Christ. When you say, start seeking truth, I want to know truth, you know who you're really seeking? If you have a love of the truth and you really want to know the truth, you're seeking Jesus Christ. Okay. Not looking for what you want. I want answers that match what I want to believe and what not. No, no. You say, I don't care what it is. I want to know truth. Absolute truth. So, let's talk about the world real quick. So we've got the doors Jesus Christ. We've got the lost state of man, mankind. What about the world that I'm trying to show? This is the world that they're in. Revelations 20.14 We already talked about this. If you stay in here, death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life is cast in the lake of fire. If you stay in this, this is the door, the second path. This is the gate. Think of this whole marker board as a door. It's leading to hell. But God says... Here's a door that, that gets you out of hell. You don't have to go to hell. If you keep going this direction in the world, and you ignore that door, this is the big door that's talking about. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. If you stay here, it says, uh, Wherefore, if thy hand or foot offend thee, uh, Matthew 18, 8. Sorry, Matthew 18, 8. 
Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maim, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into the lake of fire. You get to a point in your life where you realize nothing in this world is worth going to hell. Nothing in the world. That's what this passage is talking about. Nothing in this world is worth going to hell for. Okay? Not all the physical possessions, not all the fleshly desires, the sin, the wickedness, the cars, the women, uh, movies, TV shows, video games that are wicked in God's eyes, um, fornication, porn, alcohol, drugs, I can keep going on and on. There's nothing in this world that's worth you going to hell for all eternity. Matthew 25, 41. And if you decide that it is worth it, this is what you're going to hear one day. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye accursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Oh yeah. That's what you're going to hear if you choose the world, this gate, this big broad gate, this door, over this door. I drew this for small because remember it says narrow. Few the be that find it because you have to be seeking it to find it. 2 Corinthians 11.3 this, this is what we talk about a lot. Okay, This is the world. And we're going to get into this after we show the true plan of salvation. We're going to get into this. 2 Corinthians 11.3 But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. Remember the serpent told Eve, Yea, hath God said, you shall, not, you shall not surely die. When you eat thereof, you shall be gods, knowing good and evil. So remember what we talked about. This is the state you're in. Satan loves this state. So people who want nothing to do with Jesus Christ, he, he, lo he loves those people. Why? Because they're easy. He doesn't really have to do much. But when someone starts to seek God, what's he got to do? He's got to try to keep them, and start has some countermeasures, if you want to say, to keep someone from getting saved. And what is that? But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The plan of salvation is so simple, so easy, but you're going to find the people are out there, his servants, Satan, are going to be out there, and they're going to try to mess the gospel up. Anything they can do to keep you from finding the true gospel. Okay? And I'll, I'm going to go off on a tangent just a little bit. Um, if I have, let me use this as an example, let's say, I'm trying to figure out a good way to say it. Let's say I've got a picture of me in a nice suit, and I say, I got married that day. Um, then somebody else says, well, how do you hide that fact? Well, you, it has a date on it, it's got a place, it's got a picture of me in a suit. So what do you do? You do another picture of me in a different suit. Same date, same place, different suit. And then you're like, something doesn't add up. So then you get another picture and say, and make it a different place, but that second suit that I was wearing, same date. Then you get another picture and you keep going and you shuffle things all around and you've got so much out there now, people are like, well, which picture is the right one? Which picture is the truth of the suit he wore, the place he was, and the day he got married? That's what Satan does, okay? But how he does it when it comes to the plan of salvation? Verse 4, For if he that cometh preach another Jesus whom we have not preached, okay, that's why I always preach that there's the Jesus Christ and a Jesus Christ. There's a difference. Or if you receive another spirit, tries to get people to receive an antichrist spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel which we have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So he takes the gospel like we did with that, talking about the picture. He takes the gospel and he breaks it up and mix matches and then adds stuff and then takes stuff. And the next thing you know, you've got so many different false gospels out there. How does one find the true gospel? You've got to be seeking the door. You have to have this attitude of, Lord, show me the absolute truth. I don't care what it is. It's not about my feelings, my opinions, what I want. It's about absolute truth. Show it to me. And the gospel is so simple. 
Okay. Now, where do we find the plan of salvation? Okay. Let's do it this way. How does one find the plan of salvation? God gives you, I always said like uh, a road map. He gives you a road map. Guess what that road map is? Um, that was kind of small. Okay. And I'm not the best artist. He gives you a road map. It's called the King James Bible. Where do you find the plan of salvation? 2 Timothy 3.15. If you want to turn to 2, Corinthians, 2 Timothy 3.15. And that from a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. What Satan tries to do is he tries to cover that up and say, no, it's just based off your feelings and opinions. It's just feelings and opinions. What do you want to believe? You, you, get a, you want to find a Jesus that conforms to you? You can find other words out there. But we have other Bibles out there that will conform to you what you want to believe. But if you're seeking absolute, absolute truth, like I had to become broken. I was a false convert for most of my life. I had to become broken saying, God, I want to know truth. I want to know absolute truth. And what God did was, is He took the hand away. He said, hey, you need to get a King James Bible. I got a King James Bible. I learned the true plan of salvation that we're going to be talking about today. And He showed me where the door was. It's not about, uh, remember Satan, yea hath God said. It's not about what I say. It's not about what somebody else out there says. It's about what does God's Word say, His perfect written Word, singular. Only one Bible out there can be God's perfect written Word in English. Only one Bible, and it's the King James Bible. Okay. So what is salvation? Okay. Salvation, what are we being saved from? Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember, we got to go through something. If you're going to enter my house, what do you got to do? You got to go through a door. My, let's say I have a house because people are always going to try. We're going to get to this. Houses have windows. Okay, you're supposed to go through the door to get into my house. But what we're talking about here, there is only a door. There is no windows, no nothing. But remember that analogy about the house. My house, you go through the door to come in. If you're a guest, if you're welcome, you come through the door. So, uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 2, 8, 9, and 10. This is going to push us in the direction that we're going to be going for this study. Okay? For by grace are ye saved through faith. What is salvation? God's grace. God's grace is why there's a door there for you to go through. It's because of God's grace that there's a way that you don't have to go to hell south of this board, and you can go to heaven north. Just for our picture going, north is heaven, south is hell. Okay? That's God's grace. God is always, when He's dealing with man and saving man, He's saving them by His grace. Not by your good works, which we're going to get into, but by, your, by His grace. Now it says, for by grace are you saved through faith. We're going to talk about the through faith is what the Bible gives as instructions on how to find God's grace. And that not of yourselves it is a gift of God. Gift. Okay? It's not something you've earned or deserved. It's something that is given to you. Or you can ask for it and it's given to you. But it's all about not deserving it. Okay? Some people like to attack asking for God to save them because that's works. I can ask for something and not deserve it. Okay? I've had people help me a lot where I needed help and I've asked for help and they could have said no. 
Oh, come on, but I earned it because I asked. No. We'll talk about those kind of peoples. So we'll get to them in a little bit that like to change God's, the simplicity of Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So as we see here, all the steps are actually here for the plan of salvation and what happens after salvation. You're created in Christ Jesus and the good works. So what is the first step in that through faith? you got to go through faith. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with put this to the side. Now I'm just grabbing colors. So we're going to start with repentance. The Bible says go through repentance. I hope this stuff isn't too small. So you gotta go with repentance. You gotta go this way. Okay. Now, 2 Corinthians 7 9. Now I rejoice, not that ye not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. Why is that important? For ye were made sorry after a godly manner that you might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. That's why Paul is saying, not that you were made sorry, just plain sorry, because there's two types of sorrow. Okay? Godly sorrow, that leads this direction, we're going towards the door, and there's worldly sorrow, you stay where you are, and you're going to end up in hell. Verse 11, For the, behold, this selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourself, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge, in all things ye have approved yourself to be clear in this matter. True repentance happens in the heart. And it says, un. It says, to salvation. What is salvation? God's grace. Salvation is this door that you get to go through. So when it says, through faith, through the door, how do you get to that door? Well, the Bible says, you've got to go through repentance. That's how we know repentance is faith. You have to go through repentance. Mark 2.17. What repentance is, real quick is what we talked about. We talked about the lost state of man. Okay? That's why it says godly sorrow too, because you can't, some people can just say, I'm a sinner. I've come across a lot of lost people that says, I'm a sinner, but I love my sin. Oh yeah, I, I, I know, I know. I'm not the best person in the world. Uh, I'm a good person. I'm not as bad as that person is over there. That person over there, they're, they're murderers, they're rapists child molesters. I'm throwing like the most wicked stuff out there. Sodomites. They'll grab something that's totally obvious when it comes to good morals that's wicked sin. They'll be like, but I don't do that stuff. And you look at them and say, have you ever lied? Yeah, I've lied. Have you ever coveted after you've seen a beautiful woman and thought bad thoughts? Well, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, she dressed that way. Uh, you watch movies and TV shows and video games that promote a lot of things I just said that were, was completely wicked. Oh yeah, but those people in the movies are bad people. You're still watching it and paying for it, right? Okay. You come to this lost state and you've got to realize that there's something wrong with you. You're seeking truth and you get pointed to the truth and you have to come to that point that you're broken and you see the state that you're in. You're no good. Mark 2, 17, when Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. True repentance is godly sorrow for sinning against him. Godly sorrow. Okay? That's the key. It's not just saying I'm a sinner. It's saying, Lord, 
I'm a filthy, low down, no good sinner on my way to hell, Lord. I am so sorry for sinning against you. If you're sorry for something, then you don't want to do it. This isn't works-based salvation. You come to say, I'm sorry to somebody. You're sorry for what you did, and you wish you didn't do it. That hurt somebody. You come to God broken, sorry for sinning against Him, and wishing you never sinned against Him. You already have. It's done. You've sinned against Him. You come to Him as a sinner, but you have that sorrow wishing that you hadn't sinned against God. You're on your way to hell, and you deserve to go to hell. Where does that repentance lead to? A different color. Belief. I don't know if that can be, I tried to choose a color, but there's an arrow there that says belief. Let's do a different color. That just looks even to me like I don't know how it's going to turn out. So you get one direction, repentance, and what does repentance lead to? You have to follow repentance to find So you can believe the next next instruction. Belief. Okay. First Corinthians 15, chapter uh, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You've got to come repentant to God and say, Lord, I'm on my way to hell. I deserve to go to hell. Lord, I'm sorry that I ever sinned against You. What must I do to be saved? And what does God do? When you, thought that, when you saw that there was something wrong with you, something wrong with the state of man, what did God do? He pointed you to this, the door. Then you get to the point where you say, Lord, you come to him broken, dirty, rotten sinner, and you say, Lord, what must I do to get saved? What do you think he's going to do? He's going to point you to the door, Jesus Christ. Okay. 1 Timothy 1.15 This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. This wretched man right here, this wretched woman. I'm hoping that's sinking in. 1 Peter 3.18, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened, by the Spirit. Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, was nailed to a cross. First he was whipped, blood dripping out all over. The Bible says he was bruised, beaten beyond recognition. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Okay? He had his beard ripped out. He had to carry this cross. He was nailed to it. He had a crown of thorns on his head. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh, and in the flesh condemned sin. I mean, he condemned sin in the flesh. He was perfect. He was sinless, and yet he took on the punishment for the sins of the world. You have to come to this point where you can't come to that broken point of believing in everything I just said, that he died for your sins if you skip repentance. There's a plan of salvation, a road map to get you to the door. If you skip one of these, you're going to miss that door. You're not going to find it. And we're going to see about the people who don't want to find it. They, they don't want to find it. Okay? But you, if you're lost out there that are truly seeking truth and have 
such a love for the truth, and God's letting you know that there's something wrong. And He's given us this King James Bible. And I should have drove, <laughs> drove, um, drawn another person holding the Bible, preaching the gospel to this person. But where do we find the true plan of salvation? In the King James Bible. You come to this broken state. You see something's wrong. You get through repentance. What's next, Lord? I went this way. What do I have to do now? Now you got to go this way. Belief. Romans 4.19 And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. When we read in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, death, burial, and resurrection. Why is the resurrection so important? Because God manifests in the flesh, raised himself from the dead. He was raised from the dead to prove that he was God and that he overcame sin. The punishment of sin. Punishment I should pay for. If you're saved out there, this is a punishment you should pay for. If you're lost and you reject Jesus Christ, belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, you will pay for it. Mm -hmm. You cannot skip anything. So you go, you get your belief. You repent. Repentance. You have your belief. What does God say to do next for the through faith that we talked about in Ephesians 8 and 9? Mm -hmm. Confess. Get another dark color out here. We did these two. Um, everything else here is light. <laughs> uh, we got dark blue here. Let's try dark blue. Mm -hmm. Confess. Repentance, belief, I did a diagonal to the right a little bit to find the door. You gotta confess. How do we know this? Mm -hmm. First, how do we know belief comes before salvation? Uh, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, which is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Okay? Belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ is, leads to God's grace, salvation. Okay, you've gone through that. Now we get to confession, Romans 10, 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. I'm going to stop there. Repentance happens in the heart. Belief happens in the heart. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And that's what we're going to get to where confession is. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, remember how important it was for the resurrection? Thou shalt be saved, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. So belief in the heart leads to Jesus' righteousness being imputed to you. Leads to it. That's why it says unto and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, God's grace. They're one and the same. You believe in your heart that you're a sinner. You believe what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. Now your belief, like I said, godly sorrow. You've gone through this. Lord, I am a sinner. I'm so sorry for sinning against you. I'm going to hell and I deserve to go to hell. That's belief that's in your heart. And you believe that Jesus died for your sins. What he went through was horrible because of my sins, Lord, I believe in your Son. I believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. What are you doing? You're confessing it. It leads to the door. Through faith. 
Now, for the, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. Why is it important to confess? It says, A, it says it leads to salvation. Secondly, it says, for the scripture saith, whosoever, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Remember we said, for the belief, the gospel of Jesus, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, the door. We confess to show that we're not ashamed. Our heart is coming out and we're confessing to God. It's just going to happen. When I got saved, I did it. I started talking to the Lord saying, okay, Lord, you're right. I'm a dirty, rotten, filthy, low down, good sinner. And I started talking with the Lord about my state, my lost state, my sinful flesh, my need of a Savior, my belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. I was talking to the Lord. Okay, Whether it's done in your heart, mouthing, which in another study we talked about this, um, you can pray without actually having like sound come out of your mouth. There's times where I close my eyes and you can have fervent prayer where you're closing your eyes and you're trying to just focus, get the world out, and you're trying to focus on what you want to talk to the Lord about and you're kneeling and you're praying, but you're not speaking out loud. It's still prayer. Okay? Prayer is when you're talking to God, whether you're talking within your heart or you're talking out loud. Now the buns of the heart, the mouth will speak. I understand that. But prayer is something that comes from the heart. Confession comes from the heart. Belief comes from the heart. Repentance comes from the heart. I hope this is sinking in. Okay. And then I read that one, Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. To everybody. God opened the door. God built a door. I shouldn't say open it. God built a door that anybody is welcome go through that door. Anybody's welcome. Okay. Now, the last part that people like to attack uh, when it comes to the door. Now, you had to come to a point where you wanted to start seeking the door that we talked about. I need to seek the door. I need to be saved. You come to a point where you see your state. I've come across people who say, I ask them, why won't you get saved? You know you're a sinner. You know you've sinned against God. Why won't you get saved? And I've had, I've said this before in other videos. I've had a woman tell me before that the reason I won't get saved is because I want to live life my way. You got to start seeking God. God. God brings you to repentance. He brings you to a broken state where it says, okay, you're ready. You're broken. It's time to repent. Repentance leads you to believe. You cannot believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins if you have the attitude like that woman did. Yeah, I'm a sinner, but I want to live life my way. And we're going to talk about those people. I just want to live life my way. You confess both your belief and your repentance to God, showing that you're not ashamed, and it comes out of your heart. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's just going to come out. You're going to want to confess. Why people attack that? Because uh, they don't, they're not really looking for the door. So you get to the door, you say, okay, I followed the plan of salvation, the road map. I followed it and I found the door and I just stand there, right? Remember what the Ephesians uh, 2, 8, I think it was 8 or 9 that said, it's a gift. What does the Bible say you've got to do now? You're at the door. If you came to my door and you just stood there and I'm taking a nap or I'm back on the computer or something like that. And you just stand there. You'd be standing there forever. Until I finally walk by. But you know what I'm saying? You'd just be standing there forever. What do you got to do? You got to knock. The door's right here. You found the door in this whole mess of a world. It's just wickedness and filth. This world where Satan's trying to prevent people from getting saved. He can't. But he can cloud people's minds. He can deceive them. And I was deceived. I was a false convert. But you brought yourself all the way to, God brought you to the door. God brought you through all this. Got you to the door. And you're just going to stand there? What do you got to do now? You have to knock. Romans 10, 13. For whoso shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You got to say, Lord, save me. 
Lord, I don't deserve it. I deserve to go to hell. Lord, please save me. Be merciful to me, a sinner, Lord. It's just going to come natural. You're, if you truly repent, and you believe, and you're confessing both, and you see the state that you're in, that your destination that you're heading to, south of the board, is hell, north of the board is heaven, you see where you're heading, you're going to want to call out to the Lord and say, Save me, Lord. Save me from this body of death. Save me from hell. Okay? You're going to ask God to save you. And you knock on that door, and the next thing you know, God saves you. His blood, Jesus' blood, that was shed on the cross, now covers you. We talked about the circumcision made without hands. Okay? Now notice, I put this here and the doors here. We are still in the world, because the door is in the world, the plan of salvation to find Jesus Christ. You're still in the world, but you're not of the world. You're in Christ Jesus. Remember we read in Ephesians uh, 2.10? Hey, you're created in Christ Jesus. Okay. Evidence that you have found God's grace. There's going to be evidence. After God saves you, you're going to say, I understand my state. I'm looking down. That's hell. I know where I'm going. I deserve to go there. Lord, save me. You tell me what to do. I'll do it. Kind of like when he told you to repent. Repentance. He told you belief. He told you you have to confess both in prayer. He told you you have to knock. You have to ask him to save you. You, when you start at this broken point, you get that's when it starts. Of God, you tell me what to do. You come to a broken state, and that's when you come to God, saying, "God, tell me what to do. I'm yours. What do I do?" God starts telling you what to do, and people try to make it out where it stops right there. At that point, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want at that point. You don't have to listen to God anymore. You don't have to do what God tells you to do. You only had to do this part just so you can get out of hell, so you can go to heaven. It doesn't stop here. After salvation, you're going to continue wanting to do what God tells you to do. God's going to clean up your life. There is going to be a physical and spiritual change in your life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Remember what we talked about. You're not of the world anymore. You're in Christ Jesus. It goes from being 100% about the world, the way you used to be, the way you looked at things, the things you used to do that were sinful and wicked, and it becomes 100% about Jesus Christ. All things become new. Everything. What's that talking about? I could, you could, the garden, let's say I have my garden I just built. I've had it for years and I just got saved last year. What's different about that? I go from glorifying my flesh and myself. I earned it. I deserve it. And I'm doing the best job and I'm making these things grow. And what's the 100%? All things become new. Thank you, Lord, for that garden. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for that garden. This garden's only grown because you're allowing it. I'm only able to have this garden because you helped me build it, Lord. It is a blessing. You see how that works? 100% about Jesus Christ. That's all things become new. Lord, what should I do? My house. The Lord says, get rid of that. It's gone, Lord. You're supposed to be doing this. I'll do it. And because 100% about the Lord. I always keep pushing, brothers and sisters in Christ, if you can glorify God, if you can't glorify, I say this way, if you can't glorify God in what you're doing and give Him thanks, you shouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of wicked sin that a lot of people out there try to justify, oh, God's okay with it, you can't glorify Him in it. You can't give Him thanks for sin. Okay? All sin is negative. 1 Corinthians 9.11 uh, we're going to talk about when you get saved, when you truly go through this, why is it that there's a changed life? Why do you not want to sin anymore against God? Okay. First, we'll talk about this. Um, 
for thy, let's see, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Does it please God to sin against him? No. But why does this have to do with the changed life? Right. 1 Corinthians 9.11 If we have sown unto you spiritual things, it is a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things. As brothers in Christ, when you lead, brothers or sisters in Christ, pardon me, when you lead someone to Christ, you're responsible for that person. To start pointing them in the right direction. Give them a King James Bible. Teach them how to pray, read, study, what's true worship music, spiritual sacrifices, preaching the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, all these things you start teaching, you point them in the right direction. Word studies, expository studies, uh, true Bible believing, God fearing ministries. Mm -hmm. If others be partakers of this power over you, are, you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. We're here to, I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm not the authority. Jesus Christ is. You're not to worship me. You're to obey his word and worship him. The King James Bible, I had it on me. Uh, it's right over there. Um, that's the final authority. Okay. Do you not know that ye were that they which minister about holy things, or holy things live of the things of the temple? Your body's a temple of the Holy Ghost. And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Okay? I'm preaching this gospel to everybody. Saved, false converts, and just professing loss and want nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Because I live it. I know and believe what Jesus went through for, with, for me on the cross. I don't just ignore it and play it down like it's no big deal. It's a big deal. That's why I want to please God. I don't want to sin anymore. I know what Jesus went through on the cross for my sins. I don't want to sin against God anymore. Am I going to stumble? Am I going to fall? Absolutely. I, when I first started and I got saved, I tried to run 100 miles an hour with such a zeal for the Lord. I want to do this. And I went, whoosh, first little thing, tripped, fat face planted right on the ground. Okay, you're going to sin as a Christian, but your heart is going to want to please God. I'm not going to want to sin. Okay, but it says to live of the gospel. You're supposed to live the gospel. If Jesus truly died for your sins, you're going to have a changed life. If you truly repented and believed, you're going to have a changed life. It's guaranteed. Why? Because you're going to live the gospel. You're not just going to say, okay, now I'm saved, I'm good to go, I got my insurance, I'm going to live however I want. That's not how it works. 1 Peter 4.17 For the time has come that judgment must first, judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? People who say, oh, well, it's nice and everything, I want to go to heaven, but they're not going to obey this after salvation? They're not going to obey the gospel. Those people who reject the true gospel, people who want nothing to do with Jesus Christ, these false converts that reject all this, they don't want to obey the gospel. Lost professing and professing Christians that try to get around this, which we'll be talking about, they don't want to obey the gospel. Now we talk about the flesh, okay, their whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame. They love their sin. I'm getting ahead of myself. So, uh, carnally minded walking after the flesh. That's this state right here. Carnally minded walking after the flesh. You get saved, God's blood washes your sins away, and now you're spiritually minded and walking after the Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes in. God saves you. Now, this is where I'm going to try to move to a part, another part. So I'll see you in the next part of this study, uh, Finding the Door.
Okay, I think we're back for this part. Carly Minded, we talked about what it takes to find the door. The changed life after salvation, why it happens. Now we're going to talk about people who don't want to do this. You've got people, we're going to throw this in here real quick, okay, that don't want the door, period. You've got uh, people over here that they want to follow Buddha. Okay? You've got people over here they want to follow Muhammad. You've got all these people that flat out reject the door and want nothing to do with the door. But what we're going to talk about We're going to talk about this person right, we'll put him right here. Talk about this person right here. Someone who wants to go to heaven and doesn't want to go to hell. But they also don't want to go through this door. They don't want to go through that door to get to heaven. Why people reject the true plan of salvation? John 3.15. Okay. We're going to go through it all and then talk about it. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have ever eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's God's grace right there. Uh, hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, not for mankind. You don't have to go to hell. God grace mm -hmm. that the world through him might be saved the door he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light light has come into the world and men love darkness they love this they love the darkness of the world they don't want the light. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. They love their sin. They love their flesh. They love being carnally minded and walking after the flesh. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. They don't want to go through this. Their deeds will be reproved. They'd be shown who, for what they are. Light would be on them. And after salvation, they'd have to change. There's people out there that they want to be saved, but they don't want to have a changed life after salvation. They really, truly are not sorry for sinning against God. And they don't truly believe in the Jesus Christ. Lest is deeds to be reproved, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God, the changed life. Okay? But he that doeth truth we talked about this. This person says, something's wrong with me. Something's wrong with this world. Something's wrong with the state of man. Truth, coming to the light. God shows you how to get to God's grace, how to get to the door. And then what happens afterwards? That his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. To change life. God owns me. God tells me what to do. People look at me and go, that person's different. That person doesn't watch movies. That person, I remember him. That man, and I'm pointing at myself at the camera. That man right there, he used to be into video games, movies, TV shows, porn. He used to go out to eat all the time. He had no problem being around people who drink and smoke and cuss and worldly music. I mean, look at the guy now. He's given all that up. That's not in his life anymore. He refuses to do it. He doesn't want to be around people who do do it. He keeps telling me about Jesus Christ now. Oh yeah, he tried to tell me about Jesus Christ. He tried to tell me that I'm on my way to hell. There's supposed to be a difference, okay? That they, that they are rotten God. That you are in Christ Jesus. The changed life. Physically and spiritually. You give God glory in everything. You give Him thanks in everything. You're always trying to witness to people that you love. Lost people. Okay. Now... Why do people reject the true plan? They love their flesh. But now we're going to talk about this. People want to 
try to see if they can find another way. There's got to be another way to heaven where we don't have to go through the door. The Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Capital L, Lord Jesus Christ. There's got to be another way. Okay? So, this is what the world wants to do. We're going to talk about this person right here. What does the world want to do? 1 John 2.15 Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. They want to love the world. But they want to go to heaven. James 4.4 4, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not the French, that the friendship of the world is enemy with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. They want to love the world. They want to be a friend of the world. The world's way is sin. The world way is like a flesh roller coaster. It's a flesh ride. It's fun, man. Mark 4.18. Talking about the parable of the sower of the seed. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entered in, choke the word, and become cometh unfruitful. This gets told to them, and they're like, but I love my flesh. I love the world. I love being a friend of the world. But I still want to go to heaven. I want to have the world and go to heaven. Okay? So you get to this state, there's some people that are in this state that want to go to heaven, but they don't want to go through this door to do it. So what do they do? Uh, they try to find another way. John 10, 1 that we talked about, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. There is no other way. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say there's other ways. There are no other ways. Remember we talked about the door. Or the door. The, the house. They think it's got windows, so they keep going around the house looking for windows. They keep, there's only one door to enter the house, but they keep going around looking for them. There's got to be windows. There's got to be a crack on the roof. Or maybe we can go through the basement. Basement. They keep trying to find every way into this house when the door is right there. I don't know if you see it. The door is right there. All they have to do is knock on the door. Repentance, believe, confess, knock on the door. They don't want to do it. Why? Because they love the world. They love their flesh. So they gotta find another way. Mm -hmm. And right here, no says thief and a robber, we talked about in John 10, 1. The lost world does not want to find God's grace. These people here that want to go to heaven, they don't want to find God's grace. You know what they want to do? They want to take it. They want to steal it. Okay? Thieves and robbers. They're trying to break into this house some other way other than going through the front door where the owner lets them through the door. They're trying to find another way in. They're trying to steal God's grace. Take it. Okay. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. This preaching of the cross... This plan of salvation is foolishness to a person like this. Complete foolishness. They want another way. They want their way. Like I said, they don't like the right way. They try to find another way. 2 Corinthians 4.3 But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. They're not looking for the door. So they don't see it. All they see is the world. And they see what they want to see. Well, I want to go to heaven, so I'll just believe what I want to believe so I can continue in my sin, continue living however I want to live. So, notice what we talked about here. I'm going to use black period because these are the three proper states. Repentance, belief, confession. That's true belief. I used uh, kind of like a magenta pinkish. That's true belief. You can't have true belief in the Jesus Christ, the door, if you skip repentance, then you're not capable of believing in the Jesus Christ. I've done a study already. Um, salvation for lost sinners, belief, it was part two, I think it is. Okay. So these people, what they want to do is, is, let's mess with repentance. 
And I told you the three stages to get rid of repentance. Repentance is having godly sorrow for sinning against Him. You're being sorry that you've ever sinned against God, and you're admitting that you're a sinner, but it's not just saying, yeah, I'm a sinner, you're a sinner, we're all sinners. No, it's saying to God personally, I am a sinner, and I'm sorry that I've ever sinned against you, Lord. My sins are going to send me to hell, I'm pointing down again. My sins are going to send me to hell. So what do they do? They take this godly sorrow out. You no longer have to be sorry. No, you don't have to be sorry at all. All it is is just admitting you're a sinner. Then what's the next part? Well, uh, it's the sin there is just going from unbelief to belief. So now we can just say uh, your repentance is just going from unbelief to belief. Then what's the next step? Well, if it just has to do with belief, we'll just take repentance out, and it's just about belief. So they do away with repentance. So you got these people here, they want to go to heaven. Repentance means having sorrow for sinning against God and not wanting to sin against God, being sorry for sinning against Him. These people are not sorry that they sinned against God. They're not sorry at all. Remember, whose God is their belly and whose glory is their shame? They're not ashamed of their sin. They're not ashamed of the life that they're living without Jesus Christ. Their lost state, they're not ashamed of it. So they do away with repentance. And someone comes along, remember 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians, where it talks about preaching another Jesus, which we have not preached, another spirit, another gospel. Someone comes along and says, you don't like this plan? You don't like this door? Let me show you, I, I can get you a backstage pass. You never heard of those things backstage? I can give you, there's a way around that door. Let me show you. Let me show you this Jesus Christ. And they preach a completely different Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm probably spelling it wrong, Leif. Counterfeit. I'm bad at spelling sometimes. Their belief is in a counterfeit Jesus. Why? Because their Jesus says you don't have to have repentance. You don't have to repent. It's only belief. They say faith alone. It's not in Scripture. It's we're saved by God's grace. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. We're saved by God's grace. And they say grace alone by faith alone. I've heard them say by. Some people will say through, but I've heard them say by before because they still don't like that word through. They don't like the through faith. They don't like it. They don't like repentance. So they find a Jesus Christ that takes repentance out. They find a Jesus Christ that you don't have to confess both your repentance because you took it out. And if you take it out, what do we do now? We're supposed to confess our repentance and our belief. You can't have belief without repentance. So what do we do? We've got to take confession out. So they take confession out. Oh, we don't have to ask God to save us. No, you don't have to ask God to save us. You've earned it with your belief in your counterfeit Jesus. Oh, you can believe in a Jesus that tells you you have to do good works to merit salvation. You can believe in a Jesus that's uh, the Archangel Gabriel manifest in the flesh. You can believe in a Jesus that's a created being that, like, Satan and Jesus are brothers. You can believe in a Jesus that's just a prophet. He was just a prophet of the past. This counterfeit Jesus can be whoever you want him to be. Why? So you can keep your flesh and remain in this world. That's what's going on, brothers and sisters in Christ. They don't want the door. And if you're lost and you're watching this, whether you're a professing Christian or someone who flat out rejects Jesus Christ, you better find the door. You better do what we talked about. You need to come to God broken and have been sorry for your sinful state, for sinning against God. You need to come broken and see that the world's no good, you are no good. The way of the world is sin, and you're a sinful, dirty, rotten, filthy, low good sinner. That'll lead you to belief in the real Jesus Christ. You will believe in your heart what He did on the cross for you. Die for your sins. You confess both in prayer to prove that you're not ashamed and that these two are in your heart. Confession comes from the heart. Confession proves that these two are in your heart to the Lord. 
And you do it say, to prove that you're not ashamed. And then when you get there, what do you do? You knock. Kind of left that part out, never wrote it in, but you knock. Bad hand, right? You knock. You ask God to save you. You want to go to heaven? That's what you do. You want to go to hell and have this false belief that you're on your way to heaven? This is what you do. You want to reject the door completely outright? You'd be like these other people over here. Believe in Buddha, uh, Muhammad, atheist. I could draw tons of people everywhere. All these people in the world that don't uh, that's pretty messed up but we'll do that all these people that don't want to have the door they're going to go to heaven so I uh, hopefully the study has helped people uh, understand why we push so hard that finding the door is the most important thing okay? and it's not difficult that's, I guess, brothers and sisters of Christ, I guess, that's what, I guess that's what gets to us sometimes, because it's like, it's not that difficult. But with our studies we've been doing, we realize why it's so difficult for people. At first, I was like, it's not that difficult. What's wrong with people? It's not that difficult. This is what's wrong with people. This right here. They love their sin. Satan comes along with his ministers of Righteousness transformed into the ministers of righteousness. He's and transform, he transforms himself into an angel of light. No marvel for, that his ministers shall be transformed into the ministers of righteousness. These false prophets, these wolves in sheep's clothing, come along and they offer him a counterfeit Jesus. You can keep your sin. I mean, half the people, if not more, uh, that attack me, they're getting smarter now, brothers and sisters of Christ. That attack me, attack Brother Brian, attack. Um, Brother JT at Sinner's Repentance, Brother Brian over at King James Video Ministries, a lot of the uh, Bible-believing men and women in the comments section, they're attacking you. Um, before, gosh, like five years ago when I first came to King James Video Ministries, learned about the Bible version issue, um, learned about the true gospel, got truly saved, you could click on somebody and you can look at their subscriptions, some of their liked videos, videos that they'll upload, and you can look at that and you would see that, you know, I'm not judging them 100% off that if they're into some things like woodworking and the guy that's woodworking cusses a little bit here and there or, um, you know, he's not saved. That's not what we're talking, what I'm talking about. But you can look and see that they glory, whose glory is their shame. Okay? These people that are attacking us, you look at their likes, their dislikes, um, who they're subscribed to and everything, and you find out they're this person right here. I even I tried I, I couldn't get the video to work on one of the pre why I said, oh, was it uh, preach the gospel, move on. I couldn't get that program to work, and I'm kind of glad I did because I don't want to vex the brothers and sisters of Christ out there uh, that it didn't work. But this guy was attacking me, saying, you know, I teach a false gospel. I'm on my way to hell because I teach that there's a changed life after salvation. And this is the true plan of salvation. It, repentance is not works. Belief is not works. Confess is not works. This is all through faith. And you didn't earn salvation with your repentance, your belief, or your confession. You didn't earn salvation. It's a gift. You knock on the door. You ask God to save you. It's a gift. Okay? But they attack you and try to get rid of all this stuff because they love their sin. And you look at them and you realize all their likes, like I said, everything that's on their channel... It's about them keeping their flesh. Whose God is their belly, whose glory is their shame. There's some that they keep it, but after a while they'll start hiding it. You start getting a lot of attacks from people where it's just their name. There's no information. I call those people trolls. Okay? And the reason I say that is because you have to go in and manually turn off your subscriptions so people won't see it. Um, and I'm not saying everybody that does it's lost, but I'm sorry, that's what I look at them as. When I see someone make a comment that attacks or a comment that's really patting you on the back and I'm just curious sometimes, I'll look at their YouTube page and if it's just a name with like a letter, no picture, nothing, like it was just made to be a trolling channel. I had a, uh, was talking to Brother JT and I had a guy on my channel, 
uh, one of the comment sections, I, I told him that, I called him out on that. I said, uh, you're here attacking the true gospel, the true plan of salvation, and when I go to look at your channel, everything's hidden. You have no subscriptions. And I told the guy, that, I was like, you have no subscriptions. Why are you hi hiding your subscriptions? And I'm learning that sometimes they don't have subscriptions. Sometimes they're hiding it. But the guy comes back and says, well, on this channel, on this channel, I don't have any subscriptions. For I am many. And he left it like that. And I was talking to the brother JT, and I'm like, you know what the guy just did? He just admitted to being a troll. A playing out troll. Someone who's there to cause trouble. That's why I told people I've got to start blocking some people because they're purposely there to... This leads you to this state. Satan doesn't want you at this state. But let's say, you, for you and me, brothers and sisters in Christ, God got us to this state. Now what is Satan's plan to mess you up? That's what's going on in 1st and 2nd Corinthians. They're coming in, creating false converts, these people right here. And these people right here are trying to mess these people up. That's why I could do it. But he's like, for I am many. Almost like he was laughing as he was typing in, for I am many. <laughs> and JT's like, you should have responded with, um, what are you, legion? Remember the guy that was devil-possessed by so many demons that he says, for we are many? Like the guy's devil possessed. And I, had, I was like, oh, JT, I wish I had said that. But the point is, that's what we're having to deal with. We're dealing with people like this. And they're attacking us. And we're doing our best to treat Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women out there that watch this ministry. I'm trying to treat you like this over here. But I get people like this coming in, trying to mess you up, and I have to put them in their place. And if they just keep coming in and keep causing trouble, i got to block them. They don't want to find the door. They don't want the door. They want a door. And they, be, and they keep getting told, uh, there's a door right here. All you have to do is do this right here, and, and here's a side door right here. Do you see any door there? No. They're being deceived. When the catching away of the body of Christ happens, the bride of Christ, all the truly saved, Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women get caught up. That's what a lot of these people, I believe, are going to realize they were deceived. There's no back door. There's no back door over here. I was lied to. So, I'm going to go ahead and leave this study at this. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you've done this, done this you're a brother and sister in Christ. Stand, stand, stand for the gospel, okay? Obey the gospel. Live the gospel. Continue with your sanctification, letting God clean your life up and change your life. If you've never done this before, I pray that you go through the true plan of salvation that's in Scripture. That you come to God broken. You have to come to God broken. It's the only way. There is no back door. They're leading to the world. I should do like an arrow here. They're leading to the world. They're still in the world. They're of the world and they're in the world. There is no back door. You have to come broken. You have to believe in the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. You have to confess both in prayer and you got to ask God to save you. Knock on that door and Jesus will open that door. So my love for you, see grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus. Thank you for watching.